All right, so radiators removed um, during the coolant, kind of stripping from the lower radiator hose still in there. Um, coolant got everywhere, cleaned it up as much as I can. Uh, cleaned the oil pan off a little bit just in there. I mean, so again, I drive the car. I drove it four out of five days to work this week. So, I mean, it's it gets driven, so it's a little bit dirty in there. I'm just going to wipe them what I can. I know it's going to get dirty again for the amount that I drive it. So, just kind of mocked the uh, manifold up. Looks pretty good. I am using a three or a two layer steel uh, exhaust manifold gasket. I don't think the kit comes with one. I don't see one in the kit. So if you're going to order one, just probably have one of those on hand. Maybe it does come with it, but it wouldn't hurt you just to have one. They're not very expensive. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put all the bolts in just kind of a little loose. And then I'm going to next put the turbo on, try to clock it, kind of see where it sits. And after that's there, I'm going to see what I can just kind of mock the piping up and go from there. I'm just trying to see what I end up needing to do to um, mount the intercool. What am I going to need to cut? What's the bumper going to need to do? What am I missing? So let's get started there. Okay, so providing your kit, here's the oil feed kit. I just took this line out here. Um, so everything's kind of organized. This is all for oil. You get another kit like so. And this is all pretty much all your coolant. So, all right, so grab the turbo. <clears throat> If you open the oil, or if you open the coolant, coolant package, you're gonna have two brass O-rings and some bigger AN fittings. Slide one over. So hand thread in there, real nice. Those two go there. You grab the oil. And for the oil drain, the opposing side, got a little gasket and a little aluminum plate. Now you also came with a hardware bag. Everything that was in the hardware is literally in my hand right here. Minus the clamps and stuff like that. So, these bolts are definitely not what go to it. They don't fit. That being said, the hex head and the Allen, the socket cap head, all go through this. They're about the same length. Maybe they all go to something else. I'm going to just use the Allens for the time being. I'll have to end up changing them for something else later. Maybe you just gave me the preference. All right, so what's on there? There's also two fittings here. <clears throat> They both just accept a regular hose, so the X600 kit comes with just those kind of things versus like the AN lines, which is totally fine. All right, so the intercooler is just kind of mocked up with some quick two little tabs. I just, they're really rough. I just cut them out with an angle grinder. I'm gonna round them out and make them look nicer, but the intercooler is nice and level. Where she sits, she's nice and level. Um, so on the hot side here, I messaged Greg really nice customer service responded very quickly if you notice here the pipes that is huge he says he leaves a bit of extra pipe in case you need it because this tube here i guess is used on multiple applications so if he said what i wanted to if i could just measure where to cut he could i can mail it back into him he would cut it uh and re-roll it for me i'm just going to cutting it myself i appreciate that he was offering to do that but i can kind of just do that here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line these up, mark it, and cut them to fit this coupler in here. All right, so that little brass fitting you see coming out of the side of my sandwich adapter plate. Right there. -ish. That the intention, I'm pretty sure, is to plug into where your stock factory uh, oil pressure, like dummy light in your dash goes. Um, but I already had the sandwich plate installed because I just had this thought out in the future or when I installed this to begin with. So the chrome line here, the stainless line going, that's my oil pressure gauge. Um, that originally was just tapped straight into the, the uh, sandwich plate here, but the brass fitting that comes with the Go Auto Works kit, I screwed into my sandwich plate adapter. That's something a little different than, I mean, you could screw it into there, into the oil pressure sender. I just chose to screw it into uh, right there. Basically, it's a T, so it's meant to screw into that. And then the sender unit can screw into that and then your oil feed line. So my feed line, as you can see, kind of goes goes up, goes around, and it goes into that. Some say this has got filtered oil now, it's always coming straight from there. Um, so I just, again, attached the T here and ran some other fittings that had laying around. 
but otherwise you can it comes complete that you can just install right into your car right through that sensor there um, now to scoot down a little bit all right so here's the downpipe comes with a little flex coupler on there um, I had to wrap mine a second time here um, so what it comes with here right after the wideband right after about right here it comes with nothing it's just open I eventually I originally welded a three bolt flange to it which is the same style three bolt flange to mount to my thermal exhaust but um, what I did is I read, originally put a resonator on a vibrant resonator because I wanted to get rid of the Honda like this is a little buzz you know top end sound that everyone hates including myself so when I put the turbo on it obviously I know it's kind of a muffler in of itself but what I did was I put a resonator on at the same time it made the car really quiet um, it, don't get me wrong it's loud but it's it's I mean if you wanted a comfortable ride and I mean I could roll the windows up and I could listen to the radio perfectly fine you got on it got a little loud but so I want to do for future reference was I welded a V band now on here and on the end of the thermal exhaust so this is just a three inches to straight pipe now instead of the uh, instead of the resonator so what I'm gonna do is be able to swap these out really quickly um, I'm gonna see what this ends up sounding like and then I'm gonna run with this for a little bit and if I ever want to go back more quiet again I could just swap the resonator in real quick by just loosening the wide band that being said in the event you have a CRX, I'm on the ground, cars on jack stands. But if you have a CRX, I have a three inch downpipe when I ordered from Greg. And I have a three inch thermal. The thermal exhaust is bolted where it just bolts onto the car. Just to give you an idea, you have very little ground clearance. I'm actually raising the car today a little bit. Um, if you can see this. There's some oil pan clearance, right? That's about as much as I'm willing to give it because I don't want it to get any closer to the oil pan. I don't want it to rub. And I'll show you on the ground where this sits. You can already kind of see the downpipe is below my cross member, just to give you an idea. You can't see it because I just rewrapped it. I say I rewrapped it because I had to take most of the header wrap off to uh, weld the flange back on, or kind of down here at least where it got a little crazy. But it already self clears itself two different times. It's kind of flat a little bit right here where it hit the ground just so gently. Um, everything's fine, but so I'm going to raise the car up a little bit to kind of hopefully get myself to where I was, uh, you know, to where it'll just clear the road basically better. But just, just a piece of advice, um, in case anyone else is curious, there's the PLX, I guess, wired in going up. All right, so here's the drain fitting. It comes with a bung just to be, it screws right into my oil pan there, or you can weld a bung onto it, whatever the case may be. Um... And it came with another brass fitting right there that goes up the bottom of the turbo. I was going to make this into a 10 AN, but Greg already supplied me with the hose, and I just kind of cut it to fit. And she fits turbo blanket on. Dump tube fits great. It's a perfect fit. It's like just gently resting almost against the block. Probably can't see from this, but it's got a header wrap on it. It's been fine so far. So it came with uh, AN lines, and it comes with this piece, which is steel. The intent for this is to be welded to the back of the water neck. I did not do that, and I'll show you what I ended up doing. But the kit... This is probably the only non-piece that was really something you just can't do at your house unless you have a welder. This piece is the same thread pitch as the radiator, the drain plug. So this would just thread in the drain plug and it would give you the AN fitting over here. So it comes with the two lines. So the line would basically connect from back of the water neck from this. It would come up to your turbo and then the other turbo out would feed into the bottom of your radiator. All right, so you can see I did mine a little different because I ran coolant to the wastegate and the turbo. The kit does not come with lines to run to the wastegate. I just chose to do that. Down there, there's a nice silver, right there where my finger is sitting, there's a silver block plug that does not come with the kit. I did this just for convenience for my own sake. So if you want it, Greg does sell it. Basically, just threads into the uh, coolant port there. And then I bought my own adapter that could do a dash four and a dash six. And then I routed, as you can see, one line that comes around and it comes to the top of my wastegate and the other one you probably can't see it goes around the back of the exhaust manifold and it comes into the other side of the turbo you can't see down low and they both come out as you saw earlier in the video where they both route to the bottom of my radiator otherwise if you don't have Greg's radiator with the dash 6 bung on it you would have the spitting that is supplied in the kit going into the radiator and your lines would be fine again because I ran the wastegate with coolant too mine was a little bit different setup all right, so here's my Skunk 2 radiator, the operator that fits for the EF chassis. Uh, fit in the car just fine. The jack just had that issue um, where it slipped. The ram on the jack itself actually failed, and the jack slid back a little bit as I was getting jack stands. And I did get it welded now, but it punctured a hole in the corner of the radiator. But um, here's the spout fan I was running 
And in the meantime, I decided to order uh, a Go Auto Works, uh, the half size 92 to 2000 Civic radiator from Greg at Go Auto Works again. Um, some pros and cons already. I haven't even put it in the car yet. The fan is smaller, it's supposed to pull uh, 1500 CFMs. So we will see how that does in the car. Um, it does have a drain valve, <laughs> as simple as that sounds. I was running the turbo feed into my drain valve with the supply fitting that Greg gives you, which is great. Um, but I did have to drain the coolant one time and I didn't have a drain plug. And that's not Greg's fault or anybody's fault. It's just a matter of just faulty how I was running the coolant system. So this one comes, or the one I got, comes with an integrated bung on the side. So I don't need to run that adapter anymore. Um, also came with a fan shroud. And you can see my homemade fan shroud that seemed to have worked. I only got to run it for basically uh, two car trips. So I didn't really get enough data on it um, until the jack situation happened. So a little bit nicer of a fan shroud by all means. A little bit smaller of a fan. But uh, I'm going to put this in the car and we're going to see how this does. I have already, kind of a disaster, but for running the Skunk 2 to just help lower it, I have basically already the OEM mount I have removed. And this is with the Innovative Traction Bar. So it sits, if you can see, kind of low. So what I do is I'm just going to put the radiator in here and I'm going to put just some uh, rubber electric insulation on the bottom of the Innovative Traction Bar. I want the radiator to sit on that just to kind of help some vibrations, but it lowers the overall radiator. So I'm hoping with the 9395 radiator, I won't have to do any uh, modifications and the hood will just close and we'll be, we'll be good to go. So let's put that in. All right, so there it is. It actually looks like it's sitting right now about the same height my Skunk 2 radiator one was. And you can see the actual radiator tab mounts I have coming in front of the innovator bar and it's actually resting on like the fan mount shrouds, uh, little lugs, if you can see that. Um, <clears throat> I have a wastegate dump tube that is not recirculated and a three inch downpipe. They are not touching. I don't know if you can see that. The dump tube is real close to the fan shroud, but it's not touching and you know, it's wrapped. And the downpipe is also close, but also not touching and it is wrapped. Probably pretty hard to see. Um, but it looks like it fits pretty nice, to be honest with you. Um, there's probably other ways to obviously mount it. <clears throat> um, this is an EF chassis again um, and the mount to actually touch the top. Once the hoses are on there, it's probably going to hold it pretty well, but <clears throat> I still might try to make a tab here and maybe connect it to right there or something like that. And the existing spot, I'll just probably just put a beauty wash or something. Um, but as of right now, it's fitting without any real modifications. So when I said the jack messed up, so I said the jack slipped, uh, it pushed up in the bottom of the radiator, basically pushed up in the corner, pushed up, punctured it. And this was the, I had my adapter going in from the drain plug. To this adapter which then feed did or fed to my uh, wastegate this went to the turbo you can see here it just put some kind of kink pressure on it It just snapped it didn't even I mean, it kind of kinked the actual hand line as short as it is but it physically broke the end of it so now I'm gonna take these off basically add that adapter to this bung here and replumb two lines here all right so the fitting is down there it's got my 4 a.m going up to my wastegate. And also down there is my 6AN going to the turbo coolant. And then I've got my boost by gear or my uh, boost controller. Lines being ran that way around the radiator. And other wastegate and they're going up over there to the block. Now, if you can see, I already put some yellow uh, paint pen markers on them. What I'm gonna do is just take a yellow paint marker and just kind of mark from here to here. Just that way in case there it backs off, it'll be a quick indication just to be able to see it. I'm gonna do that on all the fittings. All right, here's a little cardboard template I just made. It's gonna go on the side of the radiator, you'll see in a second. And this is a cutout that I'm making, that I made just basically for uh, my uh, my wastegate lines to go through, and then also my hood cable. So this is just some thin 60,000 you can get at Home Depot for, I don't know, 10 bucks. It's thin. I don't need anything thick to do this uh, shroud little kind of thing around the radiator, and you can also just use a pair of tin snips. It's quite easy to work with. I'm just going to kind of cut this out, double check that this fits. Put some rubber around it to help seal and to protect from sharp edges. All right, so here it is all painted up and stuff now. This is just some, uh, like, weather stripping kind of stuff, some molding. I just kind of got it. I don't remember where I got it. somewhere online. I'm sure AutoZone or someone else has it too. I'm basically just going to line the uh, front half with it inside there to protect the uh, my wastegate. Hoses and whatnot, so they don't actually bump against this sharp metal. And then this back side, I'm not really too concerned about because it's going to actually get some heat tape on it to the radiator. So I'm going to fix it to it. So, yep. This is going to cut these, put some glue in it, put them on. 
All right, so I need to add some more tape, but you get the idea. You can see how I kind of just, the radiator is already taped, and then I just kind of added that little little bracket, little block off that we just made to the side of it. From the front view, you can kind of see it, uh, it butts up underneath, up against the back of the intercooler. And then over there, you can see I kind of did the same thing, made one over there. That is uh, taped off. It's got a nice little shield kind of going around it. And underneath, you're going to think I'm crazy, but that's how it's been staying cool, at least. Uh, there we go. <laughs> yep, I know. So there's actually a piece of aluminum underneath here. And then I just kind of just threw some extra heat tape that I just had all over it. Just to basically block out. It just creates a uh, little side one I created, too. Basically, just creates a nice funnel for everything to go through. And it only goes about halfway. But, uh, yeah. I think you get the idea there. All right, here's an update. Super tired, out of breath. I'm just, whew. All right, so the front bumper's on. It's about to look super trash too. I get that I've been sanding plastic, sanding, cutting, grinding, whatever, the last, for the last, I feel like forever. The whole method, cut once, or measure, see there you go, I'm all messed up. Cut, uh, or measure twice, cut once. I feel like I've done measure 500, cut 450. Um, I took a little too much where the fog lights go. I don't know, fog lights are probably not going to be able to go back there, unfortunately, unless I rig something up. I will, at a future date, try to make a plate that maybe puts in there, might put them a little wider or something, but nonetheless, I took too much on that area. It looked like I needed to, and I just keep opening it up so it just looks the same, kind of, and the intercooler needs to come up either a little bit on the left side or down the right side, just a little bit, not a lot. But uh, piping is in on the uh, both sides, not fully, but just on the intercooler, and the bumper is on. So here it is so you can kind of see i made this way wider than it needed to be but i can't remember now at this point but i felt like i had to keep cutting because if you have an si bumper the back that that thing comes out quite a bit um like the actual pocket for the fog light sits so then when it was out it just kind of looked awkward so i just kind of opened it up to be a even size and i didn't want to go past where this curvature was so i didn't i basically just went out to it a little bit yeah there's a lot of rough plastic i know that i gotta clean everything up now that it does fit and go back and just kind of sand everything down with like 120 grit and follow around the whole damn thing um so i kind of tried to make a little shape here to allow that to fit so that fits in there now and i mimicked it on this side i probably need to clean that up a little bit again and same thing so yeah see all the whoop. um so where I put the intercoolers, I'll show you some more, but basically put this right above the actual bar here. Let's see. Uh, maybe you can kind of see where its height is. It's right above the bottom of the car. Um, I could have hung it down lower, but I kind of wanted it up where it was. And to be fair, if it was, if it was any lower than that piping and everything would be sitting Pull the bumper, which is not what I'd want. So I'm assuming roughly where I got it is, is about where it's going to go or where it's intended to go. Um, so in this piping, you can kind of see too, I can kind of move it around a little bit, but you got the idea. It's going to come up. So first, let's just talk about the diner results. Some people say it should have more, it should have less. We made 336, 220 wheel torque. Um, and that drove it out to like 8,700 RPMs. So, and the power band is as linear as it can be. If you looked at it, look at it again, I'll put it on the screen over here. I don't think you could have it any linear besides being in an NA car, which is exactly what I wanted. I battled, I went on a battle, but I decided maybe between a Rotrex blower, and then Greg and I had a couple emails back and forth, and I decided on this GT2871R. Um, Maybe it could make some more power. I think the Skunk 2 tuner cams through some conversations with other people might be a little too big for it, but I don't want to change them out because if they are coming in a little bit later but allowing me to have that NA power band the way it is, I don't want to touch anything because the car idles and runs great. Now, that being said, 
The power level that you just saw was before that massive leak back there. But it's crazy because the car still held boost just fine. So when I fixed that leak and went and did some more pulls on the street, now it makes the same max uh, peak uh, PSI boost that we were at, but it makes it 2,000 RPMs earlier. So let's just say we made 340 before, maybe it makes, you know, I don't know, 370 now. I don't know, I'm just taking a, a ballpark number. I don't really care because the power curve is exactly what I wanted, the car runs well, and I can't ask for anything better on that. Um, so Greg delivered on that through our conversations that we had. He has delivered on customer service, which has been great. I had some questions about that pipe before I went, you know, cut on it. He responded immediately. The fitment on everything is, is great. Just be aware, obviously, the kit's kind of big as far as the intercooler fitting, so you're gonna have to obviously trim out pieces of your bumper. Um, but I'm not gonna fault him for that if you want to get a smaller intercooler. Um, I will say the intercooler cruising, let's just say we stayed at a stoplight and we get up to 120 IATs, because I'm in Florida, it gets hot. Um, good maybe two minutes of cruising, it'll drop. It will maintain, typically, 20 degrees hotter than whatever is outside. So, except for the really cold months. But like, so if it was 80 degrees out the other day, it will sit at about like 95-ish max at 100 while I'm just cruising on the street. And that's not on highway. So that's like me cruising around like stoplight to stoplight. Um, you know, obviously you can go do whatever the case. So the intercooler does, I think everything does exactly what it needs to be doing. It functions great. Um, that being said, if you're scared or you're hesitating on doing this, the, this is basically, a, to me, honestly, it was a drop-in kit. The only things that I had to do that were fabricating were those two little aluminum brackets. Man, it, you can just go buy some aluminum, use a workbench, what I use, whatever the case is, use a little mallet, hammer it. Super easy to build a little bracket to hold it up. Um, the water neck, okay, cool. That you do have to get welded, that little uh, AM fitting. I didn't do that. If you didn't want to do that, that's fine. You could literally just buy that block plug that I showed earlier. Greg sells it. You buy that, it comes with the two coolant lines, you'd be totally fine just putting this kit in your car. You shouldn't have any problems that I foresee. Maybe one of the coolant lines he provides is gonna be a little long because it's meant to come from the water neck around. So again, whatever, you got a grinder, you got something you're already cutting the bumper up with, just cut the line and shorten it. Um, it is exactly what it delivered. I, I can't say that enough. The car is a blast. The are issues with the car, I'm always gonna complain about issues, not many with this, but with paint and stuff like that, but yeah, the car is a blast to drive. I can't, uh, comment anything else besides that and that how Go Auto Works and Greg were, it was a great, great experience with them, enough so that I bought the radiator. So on the radiator real quick, I had no overheating, no overheating issues from day one. I want everyone to know that. Um, it started to climb and sit at like 203-ish, give or take, with a different fan on it, with my Skunk 2 radiator. Once I went to the Spal fan, we were, I mean, we were sailing. It was good to go. I, I don't want to see above 197 degrees. I replaced it with Go Auto Works radiator just out of, uh, an issue that I have this country right here, not that would affect anybody, but the jack slipped, put that hole in it, blah, blah, blah. Got that welded, needed a new radiator. I said, you know what, screw it. Greg's been great. Um, Want to just deck the car with more go auto work stuff, to be honest with you. So bought the radiator, the shroud. So if you're gonna look at this radiator, I'm just gonna say, honestly, I'll just jump right to his race package that he offers, which comes with the shroud and the same spal fan that I already had. That combo of the car is smooth sailing because the intercooler does block all of the radiator, which is why I built all those little vents. And uh, I'm still gonna do some more experimenting in the future because there are times when I'm driving on the street and the fan just stays on. Um, that being said, the fan, the temp doesn't go above 197, so I'm really not a huge concern, so the fan is running um, and that's it. So the cooling system is great, super good. Can't ask for anything better about that except for some more airflow, which is the bumpers issue. Um, so highly recommend the radiator and the whole turbo kit. Again, um, I'm just gonna cut it here. The video's probably long enough, but uh, if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, please do post them in the comments below. I'll try to answer the best I can. And if I don't seem to respond immediately, if you just find me on Instagram, message me on there, I'll probably be a little faster at responding. It is easier for me to post pictures of stuff that I just do as opposed to recording a video and putting this together. But I did go to the drag strip. I'm gonna keep that again to that next video. I'm gonna try to put that out much sooner than this one took. And uh, you can try to travel or do my whole experience for me being a really bad uh, drag racer on the drag strip to hopefully maybe be a little bit better. It's not a drag car is a street car, so there's gonna be some choices I'm making for certain reasons. And uh, I also plan to sell a lot of cars in the car. So again, any questions, comments, concerns, put it down below, please. Any tips, anything, um, let me know. I highly recommend everyone doing a boost leak test just to just really give yourself a secondary piece of insurance. And uh, other than that, I hope this did continue to help someone else do it. And uh, hopefully help out uh, anybody's questions in the future. So that being said, hope you guys have a great weekend, weekday, whenever this gets posted. and. Uh, Stay tuned for some more content on my series.